my view has always been in transhumanism that there are far too many people thinking that I'm going to live a trillion years and end up at the heat death of the universe exactly the same person as I am now. And I just don't see how that's plausible. James, uh, you uh, argue for denying the self, uh, certainly from a Buddhist perspective and a Humean view. Um, how then do you assess uh, personal identity and its apparent persistence through time? I uh, started consuming science fiction before I became a Buddhist. And uh, in science fiction, it's replete with examples of you know, replicator failure, failures where suddenly there are two copies of Captain Kirk and which one is the real Captain Kirk. So these kinds of thought experiments uh, were already second nature to me, but as I became more sophisticated in my understanding of Buddhist thought and my own meditative practice, um, the wisdom of uh, the Buddhist position on personal identity became uh, something that I have been defending for a long time. And as I became more sophisticated in my understanding of Western philosophy, I began to see the long train of parallel thinking in Western thought from Hume, who said that there was no self because there's just a bunch of stuff happening. And if you call it a self, it's, that's you putting that on that. Um, up to people like Derek Parfit, who uh, wrote Reasons and Persons and argued that the relationship between you and any future version of yourself is uh, probabilistically declining over time because of the changes between the two of you. And that eventually, um, if we follow that experiment long enough out, there is no relationship between you and a person at some distant per, uh, point, and that you really have more in common with everybody in the future than you do with yourself. And I found that a very kind of bodhisattvic revelation um, that uh, applying empirically this Buddhist observation about the non, the fundamental non-existence of the self, um, uh, there is selfing, right? It's, it's not that there is no um, uh, process in the mind that gives rise to the illusion of self. That's what, we're, what we talk about when we talk about self, but that there is no thing that can be uh, the self. And in the transhumanist field, sphere, this has been a central problem as well. Max Moore, um, who is one of the central transhumanist philosophers, he wrote his dissertation on the nature of personal identity over time. He was concerned about if I become godlike and forget everything about my human existence, am I still the same person? Um, and he had his own answers about the continuity of values and so forth. And other, and other transhumanists have had other views, but my view has always been in transhumanism that there are far too many people thinking that I'm going to live a trillion years and end up at the heat death of the universe exactly the same person as I am now. And I just don't see how that's plausible. So I've also argued against naive versions of life extension or personal continuity uh, on the grounds that they don't take account of um, the fact that once you go through a number of these changes that we're imagining are going to happen, you will no longer necessarily identify with the continuity of things. And there could be radically discontinuous uh, versions of personal identity. And what do you mean by radically discontinuous? Does that mean that I would have no memory or no sense that my earlier self, I mean, when I think of myself in third grade, uh, I had a lot of naive views and didn't know the future ahead, but I, I still have the sense that that was my same self. Well, you can see in popular fiction all kinds of versions of this. So um, Bong John hos new movie, Mickey 17, is about a future in which you can record a person's memory before they go and do a, different, a dangerous task. And if they get killed, you just print a new copy of their body and put the, new mem the, the memories in that they had before, except for the memories of their death, because the, you know, they died. Um, so I think there are many ways to imagine these kinds of discontinuities. Cryonics, um, if we freeze people and at some point in the future are able to reconstruct the frozen hamburger of their brain into meaningful information and create a version of them in the cloud, that when it wakes up, will it feel like it is <clears throat> the same person as it was before? <clears throat> we may be able to do a pretty good job of giving it all the sensations of having a body and, and giving it a comfortable environment when it first wakes up. But being a virtual being is going to be a radically different uh, experience than being a biological being. So uh, you, you claim that the uh, advances in neuroscience, uh, uh, which is reductionism, 
uh, has contributed to this rejection of the essentialist model of personal identity. Right. Uh, that seemed to me a little bit of a strong statement. Well, what I mean by that is that neuroscientists um, are looking for different functionalities in different parts of the brain. Um, and occasionally they will say, we have found where the self uh, cre is, is, you know, emerges from in the brain or where consciousness emerges. Um, but I think the more dominant view is that really all of these processes, consciousness, the self, are an ensemble of, uh, of different processes in the brain, none of which can be said to be the essential self. And um, so just as the, the functional differentiation of the brain, there's no one part of the brain that is the self. So how do you articulating then uh, self and consciousness uh, as they uh, impact personal identity? Well, for Buddhist meditators, the goal is to observe consciously, but eventually to realize that the, there is no observer, right? To turn the observation back on the, on the alleged observer until that observer is seen through. But there's still consciousness, there's still sense perception, there's still a field of consciousness. And that field of consciousness then can become unbounded uh, by your body, and at least it can feel unbounded by your body. You can have that experience of oneness, uh, timelessness, and so forth. So um, uh, there is still that field of consciousness in for Buddhists, but the self is just some idea that you put on top of it that gets in the way. Um, is the illusion of self the same as an illusion of personal identity? Yes. When I talk about it, it is the same. Um, I mean, when we talk about the self, we're also talking about uh, usually things like, what, what do I con consider really important to me? Um, there's a novel, Diaspora, by the science fiction writer Greg Egan. It's set in a virtual world. And the, one of the things that all the citizens of that world have to do is they have to create a little protected box because everything about them is, is malleable because it's all digital. Um, but they have to create a little protected box that they put things in that they say, this is what is the core me. Mm -hmm. So my, I like ice cream. You know, I don't like that guy. I, I have this kind of knowledge or whatever. We're all doing that all the time. We're all doing that self-creation. And probably it's essential that we do it in order to live in the world. But what, what Buddhism suggests is that we'd be a lot happier if we knew that we were doing it. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and comment below. You can support Closer to Truth by subscribing. Closer to Truth is now accepting your tax-exempt donations. Please come to closertotruth.com forward slash donate. Thank you very much for supporting us and thanks for watching.